Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Joe Moore Podcast, JV Podcast Network. Before we get to our very important, special, talented guest, reminder, we are on YouTube, the Joe Moore Podcast. Be sure to like, uh, review, subscribe, hit that bell notifications, never miss an episode. Also, Apple and Spotify, the Joe Moore Podcast, rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. So, business out of the way, let's get to our guest. Hime Marie, this is Joe Boar Podcast After Dark, adult film star and five-star Uber passenger. Just going to throw <laughs> that out there. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Of course, Hime. How are, thank you for doing this. How, how have you been? How are you? I've been pretty good since we last spoke. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, more or less the same, just kind of trying to deal with the COVID stuff as it comes, but... Yeah, not a whole lot has changed. Yeah, just rolling with the punches. So I feel like people are probably like, okay, what's what's the deal here? So let's give them the background. You and your boyfriend were out to dinner one night. I pick you guys up. We get to talking about what you guys do in the industry. And, we, and it was a pretty, I mean, it was probably, you know, 20, 25 minute ride. So we were able to have, get a little nice conversation going. And, yeah. and at the end, it was so funny because you mentioned like guys, you know, being weird or creepy. And then I'm like the guy like, hey, I kind of do this podcast thing, not to be weird, but I like, how do we stay in contact here? I'd love, I'd love to have you on. That was back in either late November, early December. Yeah, and that was a while back. No, it's crazy. And correct, remind me or correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't you guys telling me about an Uber driver, I think? earlier that night that took you guys to dinner he was like really weird and was like into conspiracies and gave you some sort of book or something oh, yeah yeah that wasn't maybe it was earlier that night I can't remember but there was this guy I don't remember his exact name but I mean I could find it because we still have the book that he <laughs> did give us and um I don't know how we got onto the topic but he basically said yeah you know um I wrote a book and it's just all the truth in there. Everything I wrote in there, it's all, you know, the truth that you need to know about the world and the celebrities that you think you Whoa. know on TV and just like aliens and just a bunch of, it was a bunch of crazy stuff. So it was a lot coming at me at one time and I was just trying to keep up, but yeah, I think his book was called like into this world and out again or something very strange. Huh. <laughs> I'm sure it's a New York Times bestseller. We just don't know it. I'm sure it is. I need to give it a chance. <laughs> I, I guess that needs to be our follow up to this. We're going to do a, a book reading from this guy. Well, yeah, yeah, we should because it's I've only like kind of skimmed through it and it's, it's not the greatest written, <laughs> but you know, it's all right. <laughs> but, but, but it's the truth. So you can get over right. it if it's not grammatically correct. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. so. I know I'm the interviewer, This everyone's watching for you, but I do have to fill you in on what happened after I picked you guys, and or after I picked you up and dropped you off that night. Okay. So I had, I remember it was about like 17 minutes to my next pickup, so I had some time. So after I picked you guys up, obviously being a young kid that I am, I called my buddy from back home in Ohio, the snowman is his uh, nickname, who I call when I tell him about all of my crazy Uber driver encounters, I'm like, dude, you will not believe who I picked up. And I just told him, I'm like, oh, I picked them up. And I go, best part is, cause he's been on the podcast a bunch and we, he, he, we do a lot of stuff together. I'm like, and best part is she's going to be on the podcast. So he, I had to tell you that he was, uh, he was very fired up to hear that. And he was like, dude, oh my gosh. So him and his buddies back at college, he goes, Whenever it happens, send me the link. I oh my goodness. So he's super pumped. To, to well, okay, well, here's a shout out to uh, Joe Vore's buddies and his yes. his buddy and his buddy at buddies in college. All there the dudes. Yeah, <laughs> here's a shout bros. out for you. <laughs> yeah, at the, at the igloo with the snowman. Like, just give us your, your porn origin story. Yeah, so I don't think my story is too unique because now when you think about it, like... Uh, it's a lot easier for people to get into adult work now with obviously OnlyFans is a big household name. Right. But before OnlyFans really made it big, um, I started as webcamming as a cam girl. I think that's kind oh. of how a lot of 
girls, guys, people kind of dip their feet into the water of the adult work. At least that's how it is for me. A lot of people will stay kind of in the sphere of like the online only um, cam girl, cam guy, but not me. So I started uh, camming on Chatterbait in, I think it was like, 2017 2016 I don't remember but um I think I remember at the start of like 2017 I was doing really well on the website and I was only like three months in and Chatterbait reached out to me by email and they said hey there's this adult industry expo in Denver and we sponsor several models like you do you want to come with us you know everything is paid for um you just have to, the only requirement is that we ask that you stream um, at the expo for a few hours, you know, just kind of bring a little bit of hype to the Chatterbait booth. Right. And um, yeah, so that was the first like adult industry expo that I went to, you know, very kind of, <laughs> it's very fresh, like very crazy experience because I had never really, uh, you know experienced that at all before it was like just uh it was a lot of fun though and I actually ended up doing um several other trips like that throughout with Chatterbait because they treat they treat their models super excellent oh, but cool. that's how we started and then I remember one night I was at a party and there was this guy who kept staring at me and I thought at first if he ever watches this he's gonna laugh um I thought he was really creepy at first I was like why does this guy keep staring at me whatever and we finally started chit-chatting a little bit and he said hi my name is John um I am an agent in the adult industry you know I run a talent agency called East Coast Talent um I watch you on Chatterbait a lot actually and I think wow. you're super amazing you know and I really really want to have you into this and you know, basically at first I didn't understand what he was asking of me. I was like, well, what do you want? Just like pictures or you want to shoot like a solo? And he's like, no, I want you to like do porn and I want you to, you know, shoot for all these different websites. And wow. I was really drunk and he was really drunk <laughs> and I don't know where things went wrong, but we ended up getting into an argument in that same conversation. Yeah. And then we didn't speak for a few months after that, but he eventually messaged me on Twitter and said, Hey, we got off on the wrong foot, but, um, you know, if you're still thinking about this, you know, it's totally up to you. And obviously it's not like there, there was no reason for me at that point to like do porn. I was like, no, I'm doing really well. Like on, you know, on cam by myself, why would I have to do that? But I think it was after I did like my first uh, like boy girl show on Chatterbait, like, okay. cause that was kind of like a big deal, you know, that my first show with another guy involved. Right. I sort of in my mind made this equation like, well, I did it once already. Why don't I just like keep doing it and see where it goes. And um, in my mind at the time, I thought it could only like help, like, you know, put my name out there for, you know, and boost my traffic. Cause I thought, all along initially I was just going to be this like webcam star but mm -hmm. um things change it's a I'm in like a kind of different path now but it's still great so yeah I would say Chatterbait is definitely what got me started and um they're a great they're a great company I love working for them take us behind the scenes like your day-to-day -day on a porn shoot all right, so I'll start by walking you through a good day on set, <laughs> a good smooth day where everything goes really well. So right. usually I'll get my call sheet, the information for the shoot. Um, if they're a good company, they'll send it to you like a few days to even a week before. Sometimes you get it the night before, whatever. Yeah. Um, it gives you the location, the time. Usually it's around like eight or 9 a.m. Show up to set. Um, if it's a, I mean, sets are obviously really big on a good day on a good set. Usually it would be somewhere in Los Angeles or um, Vegas, but maybe there are some houses that are very nice and designated just for porn shoots in like the Hollywood Hills. So right. going to those is really fun. It's very scary though, driving up there. The director is there. 
he has an assistant or two, maybe a photographer is there for the pictures um, and also helps the director with like getting other angles of the action. Um, male talent, me. So usually there's not more than like six to 10 people on a set unless it's a really big production. Right. And for the most part, everyone is in good humor because I mean, we're there to shoot porn. And yeah. uh <laughs> Yeah, if they're a good company, usually everyone's joking around and having fun. The first thing usually is called pretty girls. And those are just pictures of the girl, usually. Yeah. It usually is just starting in like the outfit that you're wearing for the scene or lingerie, pretty much just like a striptease photo set. Then we start the intro. If it's, uh, I mean, all the strips are, you know, it's porn like yeah. <laughs> so it, uh yeah my my I, I wanted to come up with a question or a, a list of like bad questions I wanted to be like so is the acting supposed to be bad are there bloopers and porn like when you're doing some of the cheesy stuff where you guys are like really you want me to fucking say this Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All the time. There would be way too many. And I'm sure they like see so much stuff that they're like the editors are just desensitized at, right. at that point. But <laughs> um, yeah, the scripts are, so I will say um, the, what I call a uh, faux is a big thing right now What's where that? it's, it's like, <laughs> they're trying to make it incest as like based as much as possible but oh, cool. you know you Ooh. say stepbrother stepsister right um whatever that's probably like one of the biggest trends right now right so usually it's a stupid script about stepbrother stepsister at least yeah or you know for milfs and other people it's like stepmom right. so yeah we've all seen we, the, we all we've yeah. all seen the pumpkin screenshot you all know. Yeah. So <laughs> everyone knows. There's like a. I hope there's a husband with like his wife listening in the car right now, like one of my friends' dads, and they're like, oh, "I don't know what she's talking about. This is weird." Oh yeah, no, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You can go to your your favorite website right now on the homepage, and there will be what I call a faux cest scene yeah. for sure. If you get into the sex, like hopefully everything is good there and goes smoothly. Yeah. It doesn't always, you know, things happen. Uh, shooting anal stuff happens too. Like I, I definitely have some funny stories about that. I don't know how graphic I can get though. Um, you, this is but. after dark. He may, you are, you got no handcuffs on you <laughs> as much as, you know, maybe that's out there too. I don't know. Let me just say, I have a lot of admiration for the guys in porn you know they put up with a lot of shit like literally figuratively you know got it i'm following so <laughs> yep but um yeah if everything goes well you know we finish off the scene obviously what they call the, the pop shot is the most important um right shot like the, the guys come shot and uh you know um it's almost always like set up like it looks very smooth, like once it's all edited and stuff, but it's always like a big setup shot that oh. they have to um, do. And usually, so if it runs smoothly, so you say you, you know, 8, 9 a.m. when you get on set, then what time are you wrapping up at the end of the day? Um, some people shoot really fast and you can like rap like, like 1 2 p.m wow. there are some there are some directors in uh la who really try to make the most of their time and their resources because they pay by the hour for the location sometimes right. so they'll shoot like they'll book it out for the day but they will shoot like three scenes in a day they'll book one from like 10 to 2 and the next one from like uh, 2 to 6 and the last one from like 6 to 10 so they really try to you know like use up their time and their resources. So right. usually on an average day, I'm wrapping around like four, 5 p.m. So it's like a normal nine to five, I guess you could yeah. say. Yeah, you're, it's a very interesting nine to five, but the hour- I, I, It I, is. I, yeah, it's it's definitely, definitely different. You, you mentioned, you know, getting paid at the end of the day. Where does the revenue come from? Because obviously a lot of porn now 
is are pretty much you know all porn now i can't imagine you know obviously with the exception of only fans where you know you have to pay you i guess you could do a free subscription on there but for the most part you know you you don't have to pay for porn is you know do the studios get money and get paid through the studios or is the revenue generated you know if it's on a website and is it like youtube where you get money from the ad revenue and they put ads in the video so how you know where's the revenue generated so at the end of the day for your work you get paid i think it's most like the youtube thing that you describe um that benefits more of the the companies, porn companies, than it does benefit me. They're kind of, because right. Pornhub is basically like the YouTube of porn. So how it works for me is I sign, pretty much sign away, like all my rights to the images, the videos, once I'm shooting on set, they're pretty much just paying my rate for the day, my time, yeah. um, whatever. And so uh, at the end of the day, I'm usually done i don't see any royalties from that but what they do is obviously they have their websites you know and they you know try to do the same thing like have a subscription get people to pay and watch these scenes right but their way of like promoting that while also helping them make money is they'll make shorter versions of every scene for right. Pornhub, and they, that's how they make their ads for Pornhub. so that way you know because obviously that's where Pornhub gets the most views and for the people who really want to see more than like 10 minutes of a certain scene, you know, they'll, they'll go and they'll sign up and right. actually buy it. So, so only fans, obviously this is something that is a little bit more, I would think, you know, more personal. It can be more, you know, cause there's mm -hmm. messaging and, you know, you have a fan base, right. Cause obviously you know, I would think, you know, it's like, oh, well, I can just see any of her videos for free on Pornhub. Why would I, you know, subscribe to an OnlyFans and pay $10 a month or whatever it is? But it is more personal. You get things that are different. Maybe there's messaging privileges or, you know, however you want to set up uh, your, your OnlyFans. Do you think OnlyFans, do you think there's pros and cons to it? Like pro is you, there's another stream of revenue for you. But also, do you think it's taking people away from, you know, Pornhub or any of these other studios. Like, are there people out there that don't like OnlyFans because it may be taking money out of their pockets? Maybe not as much right now, but down the road, OnlyFans could be, you know, the future. It's like how podcasting is kind right. of taken over radio. OnlyFans definitely is like the biggest competitor of a lot of websites right now. I don't necessarily, I was talking to my boyfriend about this the other day. I don't necessarily think like porn companies will really be hurting for like new talent or people to come and shoot because right. there will always be like new girls or new people. Like there will always be people who are wanting to do it. I just think the demographic of people is definitely going to change because, um, obviously to do like only fans or you know i would consider like webcamming kind of in the same like bracket yeah. too because you need like a cell phone or a computer or some some sort of smart device to do it and um people who like don't have access to that as easily are probably going to be turning to um mainstream porn so that's what i mean in the sense it's like probably going to really change the demographic of porn yeah. more people who are probably like a bit down on their luck and so it that's going to be interesting to see and uh because now yeah anybody can like make an only fans account yeah. and i think it's gonna become um bigger than than porn actually a lot of people associate only fans with like you know porn because there are a lot of porn stars on there and it's where you know any ordinary person can go and share their yeah. you know private moments, private pictures. And that's, you know, what's really appealing about it. But with more celebrities coming onto the platform, it's going to become like an, an entire platform in itself, like a, like Twitter or something even. Yeah. Because even the companies are starting to make their own OnlyFans page because, you know, they, they don't really have a choice anymore. Um, they're like, okay, well, if you want to see like uh, behind the scenes, you know, of the scenes we're shooting, then, you know, that BTS that more like kind of raw um, yeah. uncut stuff is really what, what people want to see. So they're, yeah, they're starting to make their own OnlyFans pages as well. So it's definitely, I think it's just going to take over 
everything in the adult industry right now, the biggest uh, threat we're facing is uh, credit card merchants and like processors um, pulling out. I think it was like Visa and MasterCard like pulled out of Pornhub. And that was this, yeah, this was like big news. It happened, uh, I don't know if it was earlier this year or like late last year. Um, So yeah, that was huge. Yeah, that was huge. And so everyone is always like, you know, having this looming fear, like, oh my God, it's going to happen next to OnlyFans. Like, who knows what's going to happen? I think they would, personally, I think they're strong enough to find to find a backup if something ever did yeah. happen to them. But yeah, I really do think OnlyFans is going to, it's going to take over like a big, it's already taking over a big part of the yeah. internet, but it's only going to get bigger. I don't want to say guilty by association. I don't want to give it a negative connotation but you're right you know that there's so many things that are probably on only fans that aren't you know sexual in, in, or pornographic in nature but that's just what everyone sort of sees it as i always thought i don't know do you follow sports very closely at all no not at all <laughs> okay so so recently like here with a big thing like collegiate athletes like they're amateurs right they, they've never been able to kind of like when you sign your rights away you know, like when these amateur athletes, you know, they could get in trouble, suspended um, from school and no longer be eligible to play if Mm -hmm. they benefit off their own likeness. Like it's completely legal in the real world. Like a famous one was Ohio State. All these players were like, hey, we're Ohio State players. Um, You know, we'll trade you autographs and some like jerseys or whatever for tattoos. In the real world, like there's nothing wrong with that. You have agreement between two parties, no big deal. But because they're under, you know, the NCAA and their amateur status, they were they were all suspended for a bunch of games, which is ridiculous. And that is ridiculous. They're starting to come out of that. But I would think OnlyFans would be an awesome place for these athletes to get on, not for anything sexual, but if can you imagine like a top college athlete, right? A celebrity, everyone like everyone wants to follow this person, right? You know, and I think about like kids. And kids who are in high school who want to get to that level, what if they did five bucks a month and they did videos and like their workouts and stuff? Like, how many people would subscribe to that? And I, and I, I just hope oh, I'm only sure. fans, this doesn't take a dive because everyone, as soon as you think only fans, they think, you know, porn and, you know, all, all it's this other porn. stuff. porn. Yeah. 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 And that's why I am all for um, more celebrities coming to the platform. And that's yeah. a very widely debated it's topic within the sex work community too, because um, they, uh, it feels like, you know, they think, oh, they're, they're taking um, away something away from us, but I really have to disagree. I think they're just bringing something more to the platform. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about it, like it's called only fans, like, you know, the fans of that person are going to subscribe to that person, no matter what. And then in the off chance, they discover you great. If not, you know, um, it's just, I I think it's a bit silly that we are so, or or that a lot of sex workers are so resistant to celebrities coming onto the platform because and then they argue well we we made this what it is which right. absolutely like sex workers did help make only fans a household name but the platform initially never started for that i mean sex work was kind of like an optional thing it was really more supposed to be like lewd content like kind of nude right. things i think that's what they were hoping for but um because it was more to appeal, it, initially it was supposed to appeal to mainstream celebrities to share behind the scenes, like pictures, videos, like, yeah, those right. like raw moments. Yeah.